What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Chris, this is 4K Motoring, and today we're gonna to talk about our new addition to the channel. It is the new DJI Mavic Mini 3 Pro. Today I wanna to do a beginner's impression of the new Mavic Mini 3. This is one of the latest drones from DJI. It is one of the predominant drone companies here in the US and worldwide. They're kind of on top of the game right now by pretty much everybody's estimates. They have some of the best drones for the prices as far as camera features and functionality. We went ahead and picked up this new Mini 3 Pro drone. It's going to be less than 249 grams, which makes it one of the better options for a lot of consumers out there, especially the first timers. And with a price point under $1,000, sometimes well under $1,000, this really is a pretty appealing product for beginners. So from somebody that's never had a drone before, never really flown one, never really used one, I'm gonna give you my impression after the first couple days of using this and let you know exactly what it's like as a beginner to pick out this drone. So the DJI Mini 3 Pro is a pretty compact drone. This is a sub 249 gram drone with the regular battery in it. And as you guys have probably read in other reviews, there's a little bit of confusion on what that sub 249 grams actually gets you here in the US. So when it comes to worldwide usage, there's a lot of countries from the sounds of it that a drone this size doesn't have to be registered. There's no special requirements to fly it and it becomes very accessible to all people, which makes this class of drone very appealing. Here in the US, there's a lot of discrepancy on what this weight class actually gets you in a drone. And through my research, the best I've come up with really is that you don't have to register this drone with the FAA due to its size, as long as you keep the standard battery in it. But that doesn't absolve you from any of the licensing requirements or other kind of flying requirements that the FAA has put forth as far as these drones go. So you're not immune from all the FAA rules, you just don't have to register it and don't have to pay the $5. As the drone comes folded, it is about as small as my hand is. I mean, this thing really is pretty tiny. The sensor on it is what really makes this kind of an improvement over the last few drones. The previous Mini 2 that was out really had a Sensor size, the same size as a GoPro. is a one over 2.3 inch sensor. Same as GoPro Hero, I think seven, eight, nine, anything from 2014 up, I think from GoPro has been using the same size sensor, which is a pretty small sensor. It does not take in a lot of light. The Mini 3 Pro is now using a one over 1.3 inch sensor, so significantly larger. It's still not a full one inch sensor, it's not like the camera I'm using now or like the actual Mavic 3, their kind of premier level drone, anything like that. Even the Air 2S has a slightly higher kind of sensor size. But for this drone, for the mini weight class, this is huge. This is a bigger sensor than the GoPro will have or anything that's come before this in this sensor size. With that upgraded sensor, it also has a couple now optical collision avoidance sensors as well. On the front, you can see the two big ones it has here. On the bottom, you've got two big optical sensors and two little IR sensors. And when you look at the drone from the back, you can see towards the front, two sensors as well that monitor behind the drone. It gets a pretty wide angle front obstacle avoidance. It has a bottom obstacle avoidance, so it doesn't crash into things. And it has a pretty good angle rear if it's flying rearward. So really this has a pretty good overall obstacle avoidance system. There's not a lot of area where it can actually run into something and not know about it, with the exception of the sides. There's nothing really side facing on this drone. So flying sideways, some of the paralleling shot modes and stuff like that can put this drone at risk. When unfolding this drone, the process is pretty easy. These top arms just fold straight back. Your bottom ones will rotate up and forward just like that. And fully extended, there's your drone. Fully extended, this drone is bigger than before. Seen a lot of comparison videos between the old Mini 2. And without a doubt, these arms are longer, these propellers are bigger. 
that does a couple things for it. One, it does make it a little bit slower to kind of transition and maneuver just because the mass is so spread out, but it does make it more stable. Evidently the wind resistance in this drone has been improved and these propellers, as large as they are for this size drone, rotate at a speed that makes it a pretty low frequency as far as the noise goes at a pretty low decibel. This is one of the quieter drones out there from just about every research comparison that I've seen. And now using it, I can tell you, it doesn't have to be very far away for you to just basically be able to ignore it. I mean, it really doesn't stand out at all that it's flying around you, which is great if you're in a somewhat populated area. Okay, so as you can see, this drone flies very well. From only a few feet away here, you guys probably can't even hear it behind me very well. I can barely hear it. The propellers on this thing are rather large for the size drone, so they create kind of a low frequency that really doesn't sound as buzzy as a lot of drones do. Now, when I got this drone, there are a couple price options for it. The drone itself, if you already have a controller that works with it, is under $700, somewhere in that 670, 680 mark. And that's pretty awesome for everything that this drone really does offer. If you don't have a controller, there's a couple options. There's the base controller, which raises the price of everything up to the mid to high 800s, I believe, um, probably mid 800s. So you can get the drone and a controller that uses your phone for you know, $800, $900, somewhere in that range, below $900. And with their new, introduced with this drone, the new RC controller that has a built-in screen, so you don't need a cell phone, no compatibility issues, you don't have to worry about being able to film something with your phone or use your phone, it's batteries, it's compatibility, any of that stuff. This, with the drone, comes together in a kit for $907, I believe, plus tax, something like that, is what it's going for now from DJI. To get started, we have our DJI RC controller here, and to power it up, just like the drone, we're going to hit our power once to see our battery life, press and hold until it turns on. Same thing with the rear button on the drone, hit it once to see the battery life, hit it one more time, it'll power up, and all the motors will start moving and the lights will start flashing. From our controller, we can kind of see how long it takes to get booted up here. I chose this package here with the RC controller. With the RC controller, we didn't have to worry about fiddling with a phone and wondering whether the phone would be compatible. We didn't have to worry about running down our phone's battery or anything like that. It's all self-contained and I think that really makes a more seamless product. So we're right now, the drone is acquiring satellites. I'll show you a couple of the major things that I found on the drone that made it really useful for me. Primarily, the autonomous flight settings of this drone made it super easy to use. So I've just got to notice that takeoff is permitted. Home point has been updated. We are showing that we have 16 satellites right now connected. We have good signal and we can kind of see some of the values that are around the drone. So to take off, it's pretty simple. We're just going to press the takeoff button. We got a little note there. We're just gonna press and hold. And as we let go. So one of my favorite features is the spotlight mode. And you guys have probably seen a little bit about that on how to set that up. But with that, the drone is basically just going to continue to track me and again you can see how windy it is right now and how stable that drone is but as i turn that drone stays locked on to me and if this is what the future is going to be i've seen terminator we're doomed so one of the key features i found with this drone is just its tracking and ai abilities this thing flies very simply if you've ever used any sort of controller before, any Xbox, PlayStation, anything like that, you'll find this is pretty easy to fly. And once you have a hang of that, once you use some of the AI features with its object tracking and overall AI flying abilities, you'll find it's pretty cool on what it can do as far as following and tracking other things without worrying about it crashing. 
And that's really one of the things I'm most impressed about this drone by is that for a basic user, for someone that doesn't have a lot of experience with drones, for someone that's just looking at a little bit of extra photography ability or to get some cool shots to help out, nothing kind of crazy, but just to get started into that entry level drone video sort of thing, this little drone is pretty hard to beat. So overall, my takeaways are basically just that. As a beginner, as a first time drone owner and operator, the DJI Mini 3 Pro, at least with the updates as of late July 2022, really make this thing super easy to fly. It has been hard to mess up using the tracking features and getting the drone to do what you want it to do to get some pretty cool shots has been astoundingly easy. Even flying the drone has been pretty intuitive. If you ever played Xbox or PlayStation or anything like that, used to two different joysticks basically, you'll get the hang of this pretty quickly as far as what they do. You can configure each one a little bit differently to get the response that you want, but it's still pretty cool what it's capable of. Overall, I'm impressed with this drone. I think for the sub $1,000 mark for the entry level kind of drone market, if that even is a thing, it's kind of hard to beat this drone in my opinion. The sensor and image quality are great. It does decently well with even diminishing light conditions. Pretty cool. And overall, it's a pleasure to fly. So this isn't meant to be truly a full spec sheet list. If you want any of that information, feel free to message me and I'll be happy to kind of read you off some of that stuff and let you know. But overall, it's a very impressive drone. It has great thrust for its size. It has great noise level for any drone. It has really good picture quality and tracking for its size. A lot of capability. And even the battery life is pretty impressive for a small drone, let alone any drone. And with that extended battery pack that does put you over that 249 gram weight limit, it does give you, on paper, almost 50 minutes of flight time, which is pretty astounding in my opinion. I know there's been some concerns about overheating. My drone has gotten hot, especially when just sitting and not moving a whole lot. There's no ambient fan in that drone, so it's meant to have airflow by moving. Just sitting around hovering, taking pictures, you know, recording. It has gotten hot, but it's never decreased function or anything like that for me yet. So overall, at least it's been better than the GoPro Hero 10 has been for me. So I can't complain. With that, let me know any questions you guys have about the drone. I will be doing a lot more with it here in the near future as I get more used to it. If there's anything in particular you want to see done with the drone or feature tested, let me know. I'll be happy to do that and record it on camera. If you guys have any drone experience yourself, if you use any different drones and had things you liked or didn't like about them, let me know that in the comments below. I'd love to hear about that and see how it compares to this experience. If you guys have this drone as well, let me know. I'd love to hear what you guys think of it and what issues you may or may not have had with it as I think that information will be pretty valuable to everybody. As always, thanks for watching. If you haven't hit that subscribe button or like button yet, please do that. It does help us out here. I'm Chris. This is 4K Motoring. Thanks for watching.